Hello, everyone, and welcome to the last session of the day of Are We There Yet? And uh, my um, non-camera uh, com comrades are Conlan Rios, a, who is um, responsible for the pro programmable art platform called Async Art. And, uh, and there he is, showing up. And hey. And uh, Vax Zine, who is um, a crypto artist and also is responsible for the Hive Collective. And last but most important to, my, to me <laughs> is Sparrow, who is also a crypto artist and a, um, a, a very important figure in our community of crypto art. Um, I'm a I mean, member of TXU. That's she, and why. she's a member of TX, TXU, which is a small collective of about five or six, seven, eight, ten people making art pieces together. One of them is featured on um, Async as a collaborative piece. And we are here today to talk about a topic which was proposed by Vex. What does a decentralized art world feel like? So I'm going to hand this question first to Sparrow, and then we'll take it from there. So I'm turning wow, off my camera. Me first. Yes. What does a decentralized art world feel like? So um, to me, the, the key word in, in all of that is the, the feeling bit, um, because I think, for me at least, that's part of the thing that's been lost in the traditional art world is that that feeling of connection between a person and the artwork, between person to person. Um, and it is something that I've found in this crypto art community, that that feeling of there's lots of different things going on and there's lots of people doing different things. And that all of those different things are moving things in a direction, not maybe intentionally or in an organized fashion. That's where the decentralized bit comes in. There's not one person in control of any of this, but everybody's doing their little bit. And with everybody doing their little bit and communicating with each other, we're actually going really fast <laughs> in a particular direction. Um, so for me, that's, that's the feeling bit is the important bit because it's missing in the traditional art world. But we've got it here and everybody's going to want that. Vax, do you want to follow up? Oh, my follow up might be a little, uh, just a kind of a statement uh, of what I was intending whenever I asked the question. Can everybody hear me okay? Yes. Yep. <clears throat> so uh, when you just break down the question, like what does a decentralized art world feel like? And yeah, the feeling part is essential to the question because really that's all that's going on in the real art world, which is, a plurality it's more of a, a multi-world experience where every artist has their own world so in actuality there is no single art world just like there's no single feeling but it's kind of like uh, what we have is a living planet that's filled with people that are creating and they're celebrating the creation of art but if we are to have any form of a rational discussion about the art world, that's to say the art world, right? Uh, then we need to first attempt to reach a consensus around what exactly this thing that we are referring to as the art world, what, what, it, what, is, what is it? So to me, the, the art world exists because of a dance. It's a tango and it's involving two partners, art and economics. So this is, what the art world is to me. And it has very little to do with artists themselves. If anything, actually, I don't think it has anything to do with artists. The artist 
uh, standing in their studio, you know, around a bunch of paintings and instruments and cameras and computers and paint and pictures and candles and light beams filled with dust, forgetting to eat and forgetting to go outside and pay their bills or to sleep or talk to anybody. That's not the art world. That's their world. That's artist world. So it's something you really can't put a price on, but it's a fully fledged economy in its own right. If you think about the true definition of the term economy as implied by the Greeks being the management of a household. So uh, the art world has very little to do with the practice of creating art, which we're getting back into the feeling. Like, why do we, why are we even showing up to do this today? Because really, this is just a medium and, you know, artists are collaborating right now. We're using video and network technology to come together and, you know, amalgamate this type of like frequency conglomeration. And then we're transmitting and we're receiving data and, you know, anyway, we're bio computers processing this, this parallel experience that we're all agreeing to have. So what is it actually... What's actually going on, you know, is to say like uh, the art world has a great deal to do with um, financialized speculation of human culture. So the art world is nothing more than an under-regulated yet totally rigged casino where the titans of industry get together to use their personal monetary power to shape the cultural narratives of humanity. And of course, the art world has been the place that is often used to launder ill-gotten gains. We're starting to see that in the crypto game too, not just with cryptocurrencies, but now you can see it's easy to run a lot of money through uh, OpenSea because it's completely, you know, it's not regulated. There's no KYC AML yet. Of course, it's going to come. I mean, they're going to do the same thing that they did, that they did with crypto, the currency. We're going to do that to crypto art in any security. So anyway, so when I propose the question, what does a decentralized art world feel like? I have to take a few steps back and attempt to put into context my use of the word decentralized. Uh, obviously, me and Duncan could throw down on that uh, because you can really extrapolate. What, what is decentralization anyway? Um, but I only have five minutes. So it's like I'd love to unpack the term with anyone that's interested. I'm like, we can continue talking about this. And after we chop that word up, we're going to need to take a closer look at what the word art means mm -hmm. uh, when using the term, you know, inside of the word art world, that term. Like, what is art? So, but that discussion may very well require the rest of our lives. And that dialogue <laughs> is where I believe all of the feeling resides. It's in the process, the actual making of art. So we don't really need to talk about it. But a lot of people make a ton of money doing just that. Which I, which I get, you know, in terms of keeping the art world moving full steam ahead. So are we there yet? <laughs> you know, uh, my answer is, who are we? You know, art, art, artists live there, which is here, and we're deep inside of it, constantly reinventing our worlds. And the art world will never be there, just like the world will never be there. Our worlds, the omniverse of art, uh, all I can say is, feels good, man. <laughs> and uh, keep creating worlds inside of worlds, inside of worlds, inside of dreams, dreaming dreams, inside of dreams, dreaming dreams. That's all I got to say about that. There's more to talk about, but I think so. I think you have a lot <laughs> going on. Can we can we take a little pause? Yeah, I, I mean, I, I just want to. I want I want to get Conlan going. Yeah, yeah, sure. Go ahead. Sure, go ahead. Just so. You know, isn't it up to us, the artists, to redefine and recreate the art world on our terms? Don't leave it to them. Why Why give up that? We're creating it. Why give them control of it? Well, I, I guess what I'm saying is it already exists. And I don't think the art world, I don't think they're ever, like, if you can identify what the art world is, like you know it's just limiting what's actually going on like it's there's it's un, it's like uh what duncan and uh elon were talking about how how basically light is there's no light tower it's just simply light 
and then darkness is the absence of light. So you just con you just have these photons, and that's really all we are is these concentrated energy vessels transmitting, receiving. Anyway, conline. Um, yeah, this is no super interesting, um, and I can only comment it at, on it as a collector um, because you know I'm not an artist myself. Um, but I guess mine is just more on like when I see the, the the title, what does decentralized art world feel like? Decentralized art world. Um, I guess to me, it's it's decentral. As soon as you start that, you're inherently starting from a digital medium. So like because it's decentralized, you can't. I mean, you're communicating with other artists and other collectors. So already you're you're doing it in a digital medium. So your art is going to be digital. Um, your communities are probably going to be digital and virtual. Um, but I think it also means that uh, the decentralized art world is more inclusive because you're not limited to physical space. Uh, you're not limited to just those, the collectors around you or the artists who are collaborate uh, around you, right? You have a physical studio, you have traffic who people who walk by. Now you're actually opening up to a global, literally anyone in the world can come by your, your gallery and, and, and buy art and collaborate with you on, on it. So I think it's, yeah, I mean, it's from my point of view, it's nothing but, but good for for everyone involved um it's kind of taking like like the internet basically for content creators is basically saying if you're a content creator the internet is going to make it so that whoever wants to enjoy your content hopefully can find your content like you know the platforms their job is to basically connect you up with the one person or the two people or the 10 people who enjoy your content and so decentralized art world to me um suggests that that's the same idea which has never happened before in history, art in, in human history yet. I, I would like to add to that two things. First, is that um, yet with that last point you just made that it's never happened in, in the history of the art world. I have to also say that, like, and this is something that has been true for quite a while, is that never in the history of the world has so much art been made in such a short period of time. Like, yeah. you're talking, and that's it's an it's an interesting thing to think about because you have to think about what enables that and and what does it mean in the larger picture? I, I would almost argue, when I was thinking about the other day, when I was thinking about this, the title of this talk, I almost think that art artists are inherently decentralized. Yeah, totally. Because, because all, unlike a, a corporation or a company, you're always alone. You might be in a, and you might be in a community but you're inherently like you're you're an individual. You 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 may have people helping you. You may have be you know you may be financially successful as an artist that you have a studio, but it, you're inher inherently an entity. A, 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 an, a, it's inherently agent centric. You know, it's it, and it's you interacting with people directly. Maybe not through intellectual. So actually, the art world in, in a way is 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 not about art. I would completely agree with that. It's just it was it was and still is a system of connecting artists with collectors and with and other artists and other artists potentially. Mm -hmm. um, but now it's it's almost like we've taken we there are platforms obviously and async is pushing this um, to a new new level of, I think. But a lot of the platforms there are platforms that don't even that are completely open. Uh, I bring Rarible as a perfect example and Mintable, and it's just it's completely revolutionary in the sense that anybody can say, okay, this piece has value. It may or may not get sold, and that's another whole other discussion we can talk about. But um, but it's definitely I can go and do this. Anybody can do go and do this, and it 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 uh, it, it really cracks open a a, a window that was not there before. For sure. Yeah. Um, there's there's other exchanges of value going on though, mm -hmm. besides just monetary exchange. Absolutely. So, you know, defining it as a market and talking about, you know, the exchange of money is only telling a, a part of the the bigger picture that I see um happening now right the exchange of value that we get between exchanging ideas in in situations like this there's real value being exchanged here now mm -hmm. 
and you 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 know don't quantify that with money right right that's why i say it's not the art world because the art world is all about economics that's all it is uh there is no like well, what's going on here is simply magic you know that's all it's ever been and it's been but we can we can redefine that as the art world because we are the artists. Mm -hmm. Well, I think we would do a disservice to magic if we were to uh, try and uh, label it as the art world because it's everything is art, you know, like growing a garden, having sex, creating children. It's yeah. magic. And I think that the, the art world is pure economics. That's all it is. But so what is a decentralized art world? Uh, you know, that's exactly what's going on. We are the, the uh, uh, you know, we are the nodes and uh, where the receivers and transmitters are frequencies. And so our creations are what form the energetic threads. You know, so that's what's emitting in many ways. It's like a mirror, a concentration of curated vibrations. It's in the form of color, light, shape, and sound, you know, photons. Mm -hmm. And so I guess what I'm trying to say is you can see that what's happening is there's this extension of the art world into these new technologies and you're gonna have uh, you know, the same narrative repeating itself. In other words, here's an elite class of developers and creators, and uh, that's where all the attention will be concentrated. But if we create a truly distributed, a truly decentralized, in other words, a representation of what is already going on, that's going to require, like Duncan was saying, this acknowledgement of light. Mm -hmm. So we don't necessarily need these technologies. Uh, we really just need to continue to create art but the moment we begin to, you know, put everything on chain and then crypto economize it or financialize it, it's going to, you know, we're going to do it. Of course, it's already happening, but people are going to exploit that. So how do you, you know, how do you regulate it? That's the thing. Um, I I'm, I'd like, I, I think that's, I think one of the things is also, I agree with you on that. Um, I, 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 I think that there is something about the idea of the token, which I think maybe is mis misused and misinterpreted. Um, like when you, someone says a token of my affections, you know, it's, it, it's not about the art. Like it's sure. Yes. The art, someone spent seven hours on this piece and maybe 15, 20 hours. And they've assembled this symphony of, 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 of light basically. You know, and they post it somewhere, and and then they have to they have to produce another one, obviously, because they're a living and breathing organism, and so the reward the reward is the creation, and the reward for others it's the seeing of it, and then how it's distributed I think is still up for discussion, mm. you know. I think there's there's a lot more that can be played with in terms of shared um, shared value, and 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 um, like value flows, and it could be it could be so much more elaborate and complex and colorful than it and it currently is. It's it's not elaborate enough yet. Like we in a way we need like wonderful patterns of flows where where everybody gets to feel this feel this thing you know like i mean instagram is such a narrow little like thing you know like there are so many other ways you could feel that and i don't know if we i don't think maybe as humans we're just not capable of feeling that thing so so you know that dapper labs new blockchain project to do nfts is called flow right yeah, yeah. Yep. I don't know if you knew that, Ilan. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I mean. So they're, they're, they're a step ahead of you, at least name wise. Well, flow has been something has been a buzzword am amongst cer certain artists in, in my in my in my my circles, uh, dating back to like, you know, the early the early aughts. There was a lot of talk about flow, you know. So, um, and I don't know what that actually me meant, but there was a lot of talk about. There was people who were labeling their their performances and some of the works of, that were about flow, you know. Um, 
I don't know. I don't. I, I don't know what that means. I don't know if what that what Dapper Labs is trying to do is is capture that idea. You know, I or, think it's just a name. I think it is a name. So so I think the that will be that's another kind of um, yeah. It's a tricky thing. Like it's a it's another kind of. I, I mean, ult ultimately, monetization of it. No, it 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 might end up being better. Right, because it's designed for non fungible tokens mm -hmm. rather than having non fungible tokens retrofitted onto a blockchain that mm -hmm. was made for fungible tokens. Mm -hmm. Right? I think their, their use of flow is referring to blockchain is like a flow, it's kind of like a river that's flowing beside you, and you can just basically, you know, you can put a little boat in and, it, and, it, and it's moving. But that's what the chain is, it's just constantly moving and it's just constantly pushing events, but it's permanent. Mm -hmm. So uh, that, that, that's what that suggests to me. Mm -hmm. I, I'm wondering though, if, if the, if the, like, where we're missing, where the missing link is this idea of a, of a, of a circul circulation of material. Like maybe, maybe um, like, I don't think there's enough experimentation in circulatory ownership, for example. You know, like I think that the like, for example, ad additional was that one. The additional was that one. That was one project where it really like because they made the whole blockchain, they just made it transparent all of a sudden, and so all of a sudden, you know, people were jumping on there and just grabbing things. And and then you would then you would say oh and and then I would say oh I, I have like I'm gonna have to do this thing and I'm only doing five of these hey Benny's there hey Benny <laughs> and and then people would be excited to grab the one that they could get because they knew it was limited you know so even though they knew there would be more they were really eager so me and like and, and Marco and Lipti were like oh I didn't get yours I didn't get yours you know. And I haven't had that feeling since then. Since they shut down, I haven't had that feeling at all. Like, I, I can't afford what Melipti pub publishes. And likewise, he can't really afford wh what I'm putting out either because, you know, we're all trying to maximize our utility value. So in a way, the system is already broken somewhat. The only way I can really could trade anything with, say, Sparrow and I have a little kind of, you know, hey, I'm going to make this thing. You can want one? And then I go, yeah, and then, but that really takes trust, you know, on some level. There's um, nothing wrong with that. No, I'm nothing. I, I think we need more of that. Is what I'm saying. I think, I yeah, think we need I, to liberate the system so that there is more of that. I think that's. But that's building relationships, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. If, I, if someone doesn't know me, or has never spoken to me, they they wouldn't ask. Hey, would you want this? Or I wouldn't know to ask them. Would you want this? Right. Right. It it takes the relationships, and for me, those connections, the the connections, the relationships that you build, are the the key to everything that we're doing here. Right. Because they're the foundation that lets us do all of these other things. Mm -hmm. If we didn't have those kinds of relationships, if we didn't have TXU as a group, we would have never done the async piece. Right. Right. right we wouldn't have done that on our own individually yeah. that would have never existed yeah except for the fact that we were a group i came back in <laughs> so i still find myself talking with hands and then i'm like oh you know you're not seeing this why am i even doing this <laughs> i still talk with my hands whether you see or not i know um yeah i i i i, I uh I think that the problem is it's still, I think there's, there, there is an element that it has where that building take really building relationships takes a t some time. Like even for me, like mm -hmm. I know Vespero, like you're much more prolific in jumping around different metaverses than I am by a long shot. And it takes me a long time to get to those places, you know, and you in know, a way people see me and they go, you're everywhere. You are, you are. <laughs> You're the ultimate metaverse lady. Not by far. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, I I wish there was some way to, to to have like, I wish I wish I wish I was seeing more like more more. In, 
I don't know, somehow in formal ways. Although Duncan is saying it's a, it's talking about a, a counterparty, but I mean, I have to say about my problem with counterparty is it's, is it, it's not as easy to use as say MetaMask at this point, you know, and MetaMask is not easy to use, <laughs> you know? So I, I think there's also, maybe there's a lot of barriers in that, in that way, but also like, you know, when you do spend about seven hours of your time on an artwork, it's always hard, it's harder to like, like want to say, okay, I'm just going to give it away. Although sometimes when I make something that's, that I feel is very valuable and no one wants to buy it, I just donate it to, to, uh, to the TB, TCBA because mm -hmm. I, I feel like that, that I know it has value there. Yeah. You yeah. know, or, or I'll gift it to Mattia or I'll gift it to someone else I meet. And the, it's fun to see new people come in because then it's like kind of fresh blood, you know, and like, um, so that's been interesting on that level. Yeah, one, one thing about additional going back just a bit is, um, yeah, I, I did like how it, it was very easy to tokenize. I mean, it was almost too easy, but you could tokenize anything. You could take a snapshot and tokenize it. Yeah, instantly. it was too easy. <laughs> um, but it was interesting because like that was the only platform as far as I know that really encouraged you to tokenize even moments. Like mm -hmm. you look at a flower in the garden and you just tokenize it. Um, it doesn't mean that has to have value. Like maybe, maybe going back to your thing of like, of, you know, we're always trying to extract as much value out of ourselves as artists and collectors. It's like, maybe it's only because the only platforms that are available right now are kind of marketplaces and stuff. Like additional was really just trying to say, I mean, you could buy additionals, but really is just trying to say, Hey, just tokenize whatever you want. And we shouldn't be afraid of that. Cause I know there was a whole thing around people are tokenizing other people's art and, you know, people are getting scammed, but realistically, like. Yeah, it's it's we need to educate people more around looking at where the token came from because if that becomes second nature first, like okay, double check where does this come from, then we won't be afraid of tokenizing anything like a, a fleeting thought, um, an mm -hmm. image, um, you know, you know what I mean? Like, it is interesting to think about everything being tokenized, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. because that because that, that that allow people to have circulate ownership like if, if the only thing we tokenize are really valuable artwork then yeah people aren't going to circulate ownership they're not going to experiment with with these new ownership models they're going to keep to the old world model of like i want to hoard as much as possible but when we tokenize things like just me just drinking a, a cup of coffee then it's like yeah i'll just give that to someone and just sort of you know and maybe it takes life of its own but we only get there when we actually start tokenizing just whatever we want and not being afraid of uh, copyright issues or is it going to sell the copyright issue is kind of interesting, and I don't know why we're getting into it here, but I just want to note that I think it's less of an issue than people think of it. Oh, absolutely, yeah. I think I think because it's a very much of a self-correcting system where where people have been reporting and like it's really an open like it's like, oh, everybody's like I'm outraged. I see someone covering. I'm reporting it. Yes, and you're doing the job. And that's exactly what needs to happen. And that's right? exactly what needs to happen. It's it's so it's so funny how how how. You're it's never like, going to prevent it. Yeah. You know, stop it from happening completely. Yeah. It will always Absolutely. happen. Yeah. As long as there is a system in place to correct it. Yeah. We're good. <laughs> Someone said, hmm, just write gas fees. <laughs> that, that, that's fair. Ah. Yeah. So for the tokenized and everything, it is expensive. Uh, yeah, the gas fees. So there's current but solution. With probably can't. You didn't pay gas. They paid the gas. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's their money. That's why they're not around. Their loss. Really, but actually. But, oh, but imagine this as a model. Imagine uh, kind of like scent, how you can seed a creator. Maybe the system is like, I like this creator. I want to see them to tokenize whatever they want. And now like that system would allow me to cover their gas fees. Like I'm going to give you a hundred tokenizations and now you can just go around tokenizing whatever you want. Cause yeah, I'd be interested in what some artists would tokenize if they could just freely snap snap parts of their life uh, and tokenize. Uh, um, maybe platforms like like YouTube and Twitch and stuff could be tokenizing their streams at the end of uh, of uh, like this could be tokenized. If maybe Crowdcast at the end of every stream should just tokenize that. Um, just get in, get used to everything being tokenized and tradable. And uh, I say maybe I'm sorry. Yeah, no, Vax, continue. Sorry. Okay, well, I just want to interject because <laughs> the word token tokenization is subject to de-evolution. I mean, I don't think we're going to be saying tokenized in the next five years. I think that we're going to say <laughs> sure. program. We're going to be talking about the programming of creations and uh obviously there's work that's been done on this prior to async that is not uh doing what async is doing it's actually talking about the programmability of anything and so tokenization is pure pure economics so that's why i don't say anything about tokenizing art i think that's an absurd uh way to go about describing what's going on here 
in terms of the artist. Uh, we're simply archiving canonically our creations that hopefully shall live due to technology unto perpetuity as a canonical resource that future humans can research, and not in terms of speculation, but in terms of understanding what the fuck happened here. And so 100 years from now, it would be great to have a because uh, and that, another thing you're 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 implying gas fees that we're even going to have gas fees. That that's just a term that was created within the Ethereum ecosystem. So that that's you know that's arbitrary. Those words aren't going to be used in five ten years. We're not going to be talking about gas fees or tokenization. We're going to be talking about you know on chain maybe. I don't even think we'll be even using that word. I think we're going to be using canonical data spheres that are programmable and interoperable, and they're interoscillatory in the sense that. Anything can communicate with anything, being a, a machine or human. Anyway, I just had to interject on that because no, I just no, it's great, it's great, distract. great interjection. I mean, you were very quiet. I was a little bit worried if you had fallen asleep or something. Well, yeah, I was asleep. Get, getting a little technical here. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, it's good. Um, uh, this is an interesting point about about the future, like also like in terms of um, in terms of. Uh, you know, deprecation. You know, yep. like yep. that. We had a discussion. Uh, we have a discussion. Sarah and I had, a, and my wife had a discussion about what happens when Ethereum 2.0 finally comes about. And you know, then you're going to have two blockchains, and you're going to have two of everything. Right. You know, and then what happens to the previous ones that were? You know, you're if I tokenized like you know uh, a cat, a drawing of a cat, and then that cat is now there's two of them. One that's Ethereum 1.0 and one that's Ethereum 2.0, and does the old one have as much value as the 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 new one? And like these are things that you know what happens when you have Ethereum 10? You know, like how you know it's uh it, it's uh there's a there's a short story about deprecation that this guy wrote, the guy who wrote the book um, Arrival, who wrote the story for Arrival originally. And he, this is a story about this kind of VR world where they have these little, like, sh you know, like little virtual pets. And then what happens when the, that world, that those pets are no longer, that, that world becomes unpopular, drops away, and the pets can't go into other worlds because they need oh. to have their code um, upgraded or changed. You know, they need to be reassembled for that new world where everybody is, where all the action is now. And, uh, you know, as human beings, we can just, you know, go to another Discord channel or something, but but our arts may not be able to do that. You know, um, I think it was, uh, it was um, I mean, I, I, it doesn't bother me. I don't see, but as an in, if you're an investor and that's really a thing, that really fucks you up because then it's like, <laughs> all of my stuff is gone. But uh, I think um, uh, Josie like noted that as long as she's alive, she'll be moving her, you know, moving her assets her drawings into the new system so i guess if you bought her stuff on ethereum or bitcoin whatever if it's deprecated i'll just move it to the thing but you know um which i think is what we would all do <laughs> i don't know if i'd want to do that i think i'd want to create new stuff at that point but um but it's an interesting question that it doesn't come up a lot to be honest like and so, maybe because for artists happens. it's sort of irrelevant really you're like oh just make my stuff i'll just make new stuff i'll just put it on the blockchain but if you're someone who's but and that's kind of in a way like is is will upend the system in the end because it'll just say you know what the value is with the artists and not so much the collection part of it we got your money haha -ha, you know like a little bit i don't know but they've al they've already had this problem with net art right the, yeah the, there, there are obsolete browsers where this art is the only you know it will only run in internet explorer 95 or something right <laughs> so all of these things that people now have painstakingly gone to recreate so that we can see this art again maybe that's a task that you know there there will be an archivist that goes through the blockchain and finds all of these tokens and makes them displayable again right. don't know that's one of the advantages of an open source contract so that you can know which tokens were created by that contract and trace them um but 
we're going to end up with that that same problem that net art had 20 years ago yeah i mean the question is is it is it relevant too like if 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 uh if the system changes to be about more about exchange and flow instead of uh ownership per se then then it's kind of irrelevant because as long as the person is active they're creating a flow you know like if i'm if i'm still if elon is still at, at age 68 still making a drawing every day and then 10 other drawings once a, once a month then it's irrelevant because uh he needs to eat and therefore in that flow of him creating things you know he's receiving a reward no matter what because he's he's mm -hmm. proven it to be a, a a constant flow asset flow value flow <sighs> <laughs> and <an> energy flow. <laughs> yeah, energy flow. I mean, it's an energy flow. It's like shaping it. It's a. It's a. It's like shaping energy, basically. You know, like that's what we're doing constantly with words. Is we're taking energy and resh reshaping it. I feel like it's a discussion is like shuffling the cards really all the time. You know, and once yeah. in a while you get a joker, and that's usually me. <laughs> It's just yeah. like when you're making art, if you're making music, you're just reshaping the, you know, the octahedron. Yeah. If yeah. you're moving, you know, so you move across the platonic solids. But if you think about that question when you were talking about Josie questioning, okay, like I'm going to upgrade or I'm going to, I'm going to transfer my, my digital assets, whatever you call these things over to the, the next technology. Uh, what, well, she's going to definitely, you know, disincarnate. She's going to become, you know, no longer here. And those creations are going to outlive her. All, all of our creations are going to outlive us. So this is why the programmability of creations is essential. Now, as far as which protocol we determine, you know, to use, uh, the, tech is, the tech is going to be the thing that kind of like uh, provides the opportunity for artists, creators, and members, participants of the art world or just the art collective um, in, industry-wise, because you're still going to have a, an economic model that, that surrounds these technologies. That's never going to go away. People are going to continue to because you know we live in a, in a in a world that where the economics is 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 what enables you know humans to continue to incarnate on this plane without overpopulation and, and without all these but then you get into the whole race and you get into the whole eugenics question you get into the whole you know these deeper philosophical why are we here questions not not like are we there yet like why are we here so yeah we're we're here but why are we here that's a bigger question and then it's like so you're, you know, you're going to end up with a distributed world computer, many world computers that are voluntarily, uh, you know, populated by nodes. And these nodes are humans, and they're going to be mining themselves. These are the artists. And then those proofs of creations, you know, that, that proof of work are, are going to be testaments of their, of their why they were here. And so that testament will be something that, you know, future humans will mine in, in order to try and decipher why they are here. Just like whenever we listen to music from 100 years ago, or research paintings from 500 years ago, or look at the cave paintings from however many years ago. We start to ask that question, why are we here? And then it can get kind of like, you know, you know, you get post-physical in many ways. You start to transcend the physical realities and dualities, and you start to, you know, tap into consciousness. And then that's whenever the, the floor falls out, and, uh, you know, you do, you know, you crash through the fourth dimension, you enter that fifth dimensional state that Duncan was talking about, being at the precipice. I mean, mm -hmm. artists have already jumped. We're, we're there's no bottom to the abyss, literally. There's no bottom. This thing keeps going. And I think that as you continue to descend, you start to realize you can fly, and that's when the ascent happens. And that's when the, you know, the raising of, of, of the energies you know, comes to full fruition, and you become, you become a master of the self. But anyway, that's, that's magic. Again, you're back into that world of you know, self-initiation and using art as, a, as an alchemical process. And it can be digital art. You know, it can be anything. You, you sound anyway. I just think that the programmability is going to come back into play. But as far as which protocol we utilize and the distributed ledgers, you know, data spheres. Um, I mean, I've got my ideas on that, but I would much rather build versus like, hey, let's. Here's my white paper. Like, right, yeah, right. I wrote right. papers back in 2014 about this when I was working with the Ethereum project, and I found it was better just to build things anonymously and release it. So that's what I intend to do. Well, mm -hmm. that's what I'm doing. But yeah. But ultimately, d does it really matter it what does. the delivery it, mechanism is? Well, I mean, as it, long as you're communicating it's what not you a, want it's to not, communicate, that's that's the key. Well, it's not the well. The thing about this, so the delivery mechanism is 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 something that's important. But what's important to me, what what matters, what it is, is the canonical aspect 
of a immutable, perpetual archive. So that's what's important. I don't care if someone discovers my things now, I did, I, but I would like them to be discoverable by someone that has the will to find these 100 years from now. So what's important is the everlasting nature, you know, this infinite, you know, this infinite aspect of um, on chain or just, you know, some type of uh, archive that's canonical that would be referred to by everyone eventually. So if there is to be a standard, it would be like, okay, well, everybody goes to Google to search. I mean, even that's not a standard. Wikipedia is not a standard. There's no, so, but could we create a distributed ecosystem? I mean, that was the idea of Ethereum was, could we create the world computer? I think it was just a miss, you know, like, no, we're not going to be everything to everybody and we can't, there's going to be many distributed ecosystems that, that store data, compute data and transmit data. But ultimately, you know, does it matter? I mean, it has to be defined. I, mean, I have my definition of what it is, but it has nothing to do with technology. Well, technology to me means teaching the gnosis. Like that's what that's what technology is to me. It has nothing to do with computers and wires and shit. Mm. Um, take a break for one second. Um, there's a question with two votes on it. <laughs> it. Says, can any of you elaborate on what you see as the key differences with the creative process pre-crypto? Assuming that's what we're defining as a decentralized here. <laughs> I guess you can all read that question there if you want. Yeah, I'm I'm doing that. <laughs> yeah, totally. I mean, I mean, I, I can jump in. I, I talk all the time, but anyway, y'all y'all take it for me. I I, I I I guess like I could answer this question. I I don't. I don't see, for me personally, I don't see a difference in crypto, pre-crypto, for me, in terms of my creative process. Like, I think that's a thing, like, that's magic. Like, that is the human thing of, like, you wake up, you do your thing, you start painting something, it takes you on a journey. You, you begin the journey, you're somewhere in the middle, you're struggling to find your way through it, you, you get to the end, and even at the end, you don't really know what the hell you did. Yeah. <laughs> and if it's not, and if, to be honest, if it's not like that, I wouldn't do it. Yeah. Basically, I mean, yeah, that's, it, it, it it's, so, it, in a way, to me, it comes naturally, so it's really simple, you know. <laughs> totally. Yeah. That's, it's just pure magic. I don't. I can't describe it. Like there's no other. Once you tap into that, it's 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 and it's endless. It's an endless. You're endlessly recombination. Once you find your line or your code that you want to play with, it's an endless recombination of your efforts. Yeah, it's to, like leading to a result. Now, the only thing that crypto does for me personally is it just says, "Here's my thumbprint. I've done that." Yep. You know, and you either like it and you want to you want to you want to have ownership of it, or you don't. Or, or even celebrate it. They don't even need to own it. Yeah, I mean, I, I yeah, totally. I mean, I, if you so, create a gallery of crypto boxes, you're celebrating it. Quick you're, question if, for you, though, Ellen. Do you think that any of this community that we have here now would exist if it weren't for crypto? As yeah, a community yeah, and, and, artist. Yeah, look at absolutely. Rock. It existed in punk rock before this. <laughs> uh, I, I think, and this is this is the thing that actually, when you when we talked when we were talking the other day, when we were sort of when we gathered yesterday to, to, to was David Chris, even just just make sure the tech thing was it came to me it came it came to me in a revelation <laughs> that uh, that what it has created for me personally is community more than I've ever had an art in an art scene ever before. Yeah, like it's it's brought Same if, for me. it's. You could say it's decent, it, whatever you could call it decentralized if you want. But what it's done is it's brought me together with a group of people that I would that I wouldn't have found it without the internet. That's mm. done that, and it's spurned me to create in ways that I hadn't done before. Now, and, would that have happened without that? Maybe slower, maybe fast. Who knows? I don't know. But it happened, and that's a fact. And I can't change that now because of the blockchain. <laughs> And I, I think that comes back to being inherently digital, like pre crypto versus regular yeah. art. Like you have to think about where is the art going to be displayed? Is it going to be on a site? It's going to be in a virtual gallery, some space. And then already now you're opening yourself to, up to community because anyone can now connect up with you as opposed to if you're in a small town or a city that, you know, 
or where you're isolated or you don't have connections to put your art in a gallery, you're kind of blocked out. So but one, one the, step further than that though, right? Because I've been sure. in communities of digital artists and there was always this non-crypto community. Well, you know, I can't share the full resolution image of my artwork because it'll get stolen, right? I have no, you know, th that whole proof of creation that the blockchain gives us has made people, made artists, most artists, more relaxed about sharing and collaborating um, because we do have proof that, you know, look, I made this here. Here's the blockchain record that says this is the time and date when I made it. Uh, previously, digital artists didn't have that. So if they shared it on a website and that website went away, then they had no proof. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, mean even on Instagram, and to some degree on Instagram, like, because it's so it's so ephemeral, mm. uh, the having it token having it tokenized, so to speak, um, gives it more value. Gives it something more precious. I don't understand why. Like I don't understand why, fully, when I go to Super Rare and scroll through images or on known origin, why I want to go. I want to buy that thing. I don't understand that. I don't understand why. Like I, because I can't do that on Instagram. It's it's almost like it's 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 taking that whole idea of 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 I want this thing and and made it and and, and boil it down to its bare essence. Because is, hum, human I, beings are innately collectors. For scarce. Yeah. They yeah. like to collect, collect scarce assets. I mean I, I actually, you know, to be honest, I, I think I, I've taken pieces from like, you know, 100 editions, you know. And I'm always delighted that I have the option to grab one because a lot of things are too expensive and I can't. And like there's, you know, like I will just if it was if there was like a hundred if there was like a hundred of everything you know like <laughs> I'd just Elon, go that, for that's it. A, that's that's evolution. If you didn't yeah. have that, you wouldn't be here. Right? Yeah. The, the, yeah, the feeling of there's berries, there's yeah. water here. I gotta collect it. Yeah, then yeah, that's that's just evolution. So I don't know. I don't know what the, this is. The thing of flows. It's like uh, I don't know. Like maybe there's like a market where like you just like. At some point, you don't own it anymore, and it's up for grabs. <laughs> you know, I, I, I would like to see more randomness in the system. Like that's this is the thing I like about Dada, for example. Is it's a little more randomness. Like you, when you draw something, it doesn't X equals Y. Like you, you draw something and you contribute to a, a, a community, and then you know you get you you do get a dot. You do go up in the rank of, of the ranks. But it's not it's not connected to how many likes you did or not a number. It's pretty arbitrary. So it'd be really interesting to see a, like an arbitrary market, you know, like really arbitrary. I mean, humans are already arbitrary, but even to have it even be more arbitrary. <laughs> you but know? it's like that 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 Christmas Santa thing where you sent an NFT and got an NFT from the next person that sent an NFT. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And you never yeah. knew what you were gonna get. Yeah, yeah, I like and that. And then the last person got a, a a bunch of them. Yeah, 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 I like that. It was, that fun. was fun. Yeah, it was great. No, it was totally. I thought that was one of my favorite. I think after additional, that's probably one of my favorite experiences of where we're just like I was like in in London riding riding the the tube or something and just going, oh, I have this app here. I'll just take this thing that I shot off a of screen the other day and I'll make a little thing and because we're just making glitch art. And then like we had a little thing and yeah, it was, it was a, uh, it was really sp that kind of energy, you know? Yes. yes. You know? No, it, it's, it's good. Right. Cause it means it's, it's a break from everything having to be really weighty and really serious and, and we, we should have fun. Right. That's I hope so. Energy. Yeah. Totally. Uh, yeah. I hope so. I, I think the fun, if it's not fun, I don't want to do it anymore. And, and, I, and I have moments like that, I have to be honest with you. I'm like, yeah, me too. you know, it's, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a, I mean, I think, you know, I would define it like creativity, coding, even all these things where you're creating, like, even just like I've been teaching myself how to play piano, I call it the wall of frustration. 
you get in there and every day you do your little, you do your thing and you make a little bit of progress and then you, you make mistakes and then you come back and you do it again the next day. And, you know, it's not like, uh, and then people see the end result, but they don't know the whole story necessarily. Um, so it's a wall. Of, yeah. It's a wall of frustration. <laughs> Sometimes I fall off and I get back up on again. And I think that's, I think it's a great lesson to have that everybody should experience in some level and should be open to having. And maybe maybe the crypto art thing will will bring more people into that, you know, still experiencing that thing. You know, even people who are not who don't call themselves artists, you know. Mm. Yeah. So I was going to answer Duncan's question from from my perspective. Um, the the token represents the art, right? It it's the art to me that right. is the the prime thing. The, the token is just an appendage to the art rather than the other way around. So for me, when I, when I buy art, I buy the art by purchasing the token. I'm not buying the token and getting a piece of art with it in my mind. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, for me personally, like I'm I, when I buy buy something, it's because someone it's someone I know, hmm. whose work I have seen and is new and is interesting, and 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 I want to show them that that they're worth something. Hmm. Ah, so actually, it's 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 more it's it's not even so much about the token or the art. It's about the person and what they're doing. Maybe not that particular artwork. Mm -hmm. Yeah, to me, it's about the person. Absolutely, hmm. absolutely. That's interesting. I, 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 um, I'll, I'll, uh, let me see. Um, there was one guy. Um, his name is. Hold on a second. I have to get his name. He has a funny name on. Uh, I'm gonna end my crypto list. Hold on. Give me a moment. Uh, <laughs> Lily says I've gone rogue. <laughs> <laughs> of course, I've gone rogue. This guy named Pejman showed up. He's like from Turkey, I think, from Istanbul. Mm -hmm. And he makes these really cool, like weird animation things. And and so nobody was paying attention. And I was like, this guy's amazing. Like this guy's really like very different, different, completely different thing from anything I'd seen before. And so I went on there and go no origin, you know, got one. And then he contacted me and then we started talking and and I, this is that's that's what I love that I live for that like I live for those moments you know? yeah like that you know I you know he was like talking to me about we talked we shared ideas about like the Kabbalah and he sent me a YouTube video there now so like that's what I want I I don't want oh thank you for buying my stuff and yeah. like here's another token and here's a oh look I sold another one for ten ETH I I don't care I don't care yeah, yeah. I yeah. care about like the I care about facilitating more creativity. You know. And that's why you're my friend. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Anyway, that's, I, I, make, I just, I just blurred out the most radical thing I could possibly say. <laughs> 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 I have a platform about creativity. So I think we should, I think we should have like closing statements and then we'll wrap it up because, uh, because uh, <laughs> even though this is the last session, uh, <laughs> Lily's, Lily's, Lily's kind of angry. <laughs> But, uh, but it was, um, so yes, let's have some closing statements. But look at all the discussion that we had. I know, damn, look at that. It's good. Yeah, it's awesome. All right, so I went first. So I'll, I'll go first in the closing statements as, as well then. Um, so yeah, a decentralized art world feels like a community to me and not a market. Conlan? Yeah, uh, I think decentralized art world, it's it's inherently digital and it's it is about community. It's 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 enabling artists to connect up with other artists and their collectors in a way that just wasn't possible um, in his art human history before. Um, yeah. Max. Oh man. <laughs> I don't want to piss anybody off, but you should. Come on. <laughs> Let's go. 
Okay. One of us has to be controversial. Come on. Yeah. I no, I, 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 I won't be controversial. I was going to be long, though. <laughs> no. Okay. So, uh, so by its very nature, I believe that the practice of art, humans creating culture via the management of their household is decentralized, like you were saying earlier, Elon. And um, yeah, I would say if you look at what Andy Warhol did, it's a perfect example. When he created Andy Warhol Incorporated, basically, uh, you know, it was a centralized. He basically centralized his life, his life practice, his life praxis, uh, and produced a household that became the factory. So that's why pop art, popular art, continues to go up in value even today. And you even see that that thread of consciousness in the zeitgeist of what it is to be an artist. Like I don't, I don't go around telling people I'm an artist. People assume that as they know me, but I don't think of myself as an artist. I think of myself, well, I won't go into, into too much about the, what that is, but it's like you can see that uh, what's happening with pop culture is you're having it extend into the cryptosphere where popular art is becoming speculatory. And so that data is what people are betting on. And it's and it's and it's humans that are that are basically capitalizing on this you know, centralization of art as, as, uh, you know, an economic means. And so when you start, when, 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 so when you have like developing cultures, um, you know, look at what we're doing as a developed culture or even a progressively developing culture, uh, you can see that pop art will actually extend into crypto art. And then it's, uh, in my opinion, it won't last. Though. Popular art will simply blur out because there won't be a means at which there is something to look at to say that is the top art. Like, in other words, super rare, known origin, the curation of art. That's going to blur out um, as we, you know, onboard 100,000 times more creators and creations because you don't want to forget those things because they're going to outlive the creators. And, you know, onto this playing field, whatever it is we call, you know, art in the, in the next 25 years. So to me, it's like the art world is gonna is gonna explode into many many you know worlds, and then you're gonna have this art, this omni omniverse of of creativity and creation, and so we are gonna enter the the the, tr the first true global renaissance in creativity, and is crypto gonna spark that and evoke it? Yeah, it already has, but I think that it came from people, uh, you know, largely from American art, honestly, coming forward whenever you look at the first American art movement of just, uh, you know, this whole idea of abstract expressionism coming from the New York school. I mean, it kind of like created this like, you know, avant-garde, just go for it mentality. And that's what we're seeing when, we're, when, we, when you talk about randomness and just creating this, this uh, you know, ecosystem where anything is anything goes, I think that's what we're, what we're gonna see. So ultimately just to cap it up, I think that if we're gonna have a decentralized metaverse of art, or multiverse of creativity, then it, one thing is for sure, it can't be, uh, it, there will be no censorship in that world. And no matter what kind of art a person creates, they are included. To me, in, in my opinion, like it doesn't matter, uh, it, you know, it'll be on chain archivable and it'll serve as an evidence trail. So if you wanna put, you know, things that are controversial or even illegal in certain jurisdictions, there'll be a, a source of, you know, if law enforcement has to step in and, and identify who created that creation, regardless of what it is, it could be intellectual property, it could be a design of, you know, some type of weapon, regardless, it's all going to be on chain within this creation ecosystem. And I think that uh, it should be allowed, like you can't censor it, it'll always be on chain, it just you can curate the display of it. But anyway, I could go on and on about this stuff. Thanks for listening. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Sparrow. Thank you, Conlan. Thank you, Vax, for joining us for this discussion. It's been really, really great. Um, I hope we can find a way to connect again at some point in different configurations and different ways. Um, and onward. <laughs> um, tomorrow, just for the uh, people who are, uh, who are uh, here in the audience, tomorrow's first uh, talk is by Greta Ferrer, uh, Ghosting Your Own Project, a, a, a Four Strategies to Deal with Your Own Downsides. And actually, it kind of flows nicely from this into that one. It starts at 4 p.m., not 4.30 p.m., if you're in uh, Berlin or in this area of the world. 
7 a.m. PDT, 11 p.m. JST. Look forward to seeing you there. Good night, everyone, and good luck. <laughs> awesome. Thanks. Good night. Bye. Bye. Bye.